Salutations, respected viewers. This is George from Ireland. Uh, I'm in London and across the street is 62 Gloucester Place, that black door you see. And that is where Benedict Arnold lived from 1796 until his death in 1801. So who was Benedict Arnold? Well, um, he's best known for having been in the Continental Army and turned his coat to uh, join the British Army during the American Revolution. So he came from a prosperous uh, American family. He was a stalwart of the revolution in the early years, but uh, then he changed his tune. His wife is a loyalist, and through her he secretly, secretly communicated with uh, the British Army, and he decided he was gonna change sides and get a very handsome payoff for doing so, um, give them plans of his positions, and try to arrange them to capture uh, West Point. Um, this strategic point very high above uh, the River Hudson. Um, however, he was, he was in contact with um, Henry Andre, a British Army officer. Andre accidentally gave himself away. He met some um, sentries. He said, which party? I hope you're with my party. And they said, which one's that? The lower party, he said, but because the British were further down the valley. And he was arrested. One of the men he'd seen was wearing a Hessian overcoat, as in from those German troops who were on the British side. And Henry Andre had mistakenly believed that this guy was a Hessian as a German who was pro-British, but he wasn't. It was some uh, guy in the Continental Army who'd taken a Hessian coat, presumably off a dead enemy, because clothing was in very short supply. Anyway, but Benedict Arnold was tipped off that his cover was blown, they were coming from him, and he hot-tailed out of there, got to British lines. So um, Henry Andre was captured, he was found guilty of being a spy, and he was sentenced to die for espionage. He was there under false pretenses behind enemy lines. Um, Henry Andre produced a very positive impression on his American captors um, and seemed to break their hearts to uh, put him to death and as he saw the news he recoiled because he said he did not uh, fear to die but he despised the fact he was being hanged almost like a criminal. The dishonouring circumstances of his death was what really galled him, not his death per se. Anyway, so um, Washington, he was in contact with the British and said I offer to exchange Henry Andre, he can go free so long as you give me Benedict Arnold back to be killed. And um, the British Army officers did not have a high opinion of Benedict Arnold. They thought he had not done it for idealistic motives. He was a Judas, but uh, they refused to hand him over. Obviously, um, it would be, well, be dishonorable for the British to hand over someone who'd just come to help them. It would help the uh, loyalists and the British if um, more and more people would desert. If enough people deserted, the revolution was gonna be defeated. So anyone who's contemplating going over to the side of King George III must know that he would not be handed back to the revolutionaries to be executed. So they were not gonna break faith with him. Much though they disliked uh, um, Benedict Arnold, felt his conduct was dispalatable, or sorry, unpalatable, they were not going to hand him back to George Washington. So uh, he was brought over here. Uh, he briefly uh, moved to Canada. He was in after the revolution was over. There was some danger he might be abducted or just assassinated there. But then uh, he returned here. He lived in some style. He wanted um, a rank in the British Army, but they wouldn't give it to him um, because, um, as I say, the officers did not think he was a good egg. Um, his name has become synonymous with traitor, a bit like Quisling um, in the United States. Uh, he was a major general. The plaque over there describes him as being an American patriot. Uh, if he thought that remaining the 13 colonies was best for America, then I suppose he was, though uh, most of his countrymen disagreed.